Hello and welcome to the first episode of my Script Economy Tutorial Series. In this series, we are going to learn how to make a simple economy in script. Now, let's start off by showing you what you will learn. So, in this tutorial, you will learn how to use variables, how to make a shop GUI, uh, which is basically a shop that is in a menu like a chest. How to create an economy. Uh, by using mostly variables and also a shop GUI and how to make complex comments. Now, not super complex, but pretty complex. Uh, now, don't worry, if all of this sounds a bit scary, then first of all, you may actually want to check out my, my script beginner tutorials, but this actually isn't that complex of a tutorial. So, I have my server right here, my Mindhut server, Origin Text which is basically my test server. Now, if you want to access your scripts folder, you need to go to the file manager, then you need to go to plugins, find where script is, go to scripts, and then go and now let's also create a new file for this. And we can name it however we want. I will name mine tokens.sk. You need to have this .sk unless your server won't recognize that it is a script file. Okay, so let's create this new file. And now that we are in it, all we need to do is to start developing. So I am going to start this by making the simple variable and a few simple comments. So let's start with the command slash tokens, which uh, will show you how much tokens you have. Okay, so now let's also add a player argument. Let's just cut that part. Okay, so I'm going to make the comment slash tokens and I'm going to add an argument of a player so that we can show the tokens of other players too and not only our token level. So let's do simple colon there. And let's add a simple trigger here. And now let's start developing this. So now let's do a simple if arg uh, or arg1, which stands for argument, is not set, which means that we have not actually put an argument in the player area. Then we will just send quote you, uh, which is the, play the player, have two and then instead of doing a number here we we'll just do this percentage science and in them we'll write our first variables which for me is going to be tokens uh, two columns percentage science the new ID of player now I am using the UUID of a player because that means that even if the player changes their name it doesn't change their amount of tokens now, for here I wrote tokens, but this can be the name of, this can be anything, this can be the, ne the name of your economy, or, well, anything else, really. Okay, so, now that we have this, let's just add the same uh, tokens at the end of it, and now let's do a little bit of coloring. Now, I want my tokens to be a sort of bluish economy, I guess. That is the color that I want for tokens, so let's make it be with the color code end B for light blue and end free for a more aquaish look. Okay, now let's put a simple else because if we have set the argument of the player, then let's send and then quotes. Let's just do this again, the color coding. Uh, and then let's do percentages for the argument, which is the player. And then let's write here have. And then we'll just copy this. Put it right here. And instead of player here, we want to put arg for argument again, which is again the player. Okay, so argument has tokens of argument tokens, right? So let's just edit the word tokens and great so this is practically all the things that you really need here 
Now let's do a second comment, which is comment slash set tokens. Okay, so now that we have this comment, we will also want to to put a permission on it, like this. Let's make the permission be O, O P for operator. And now let's do a simple trigger. And now let's do if let's just copy all of this. And then let's also add for here a argument for a player. But for this one, we also want a argument for a number so that we can know, well, actually an integer, a integer like this, so that it will only be full numbers because we don't want someone to have a half token because that won't work really. Unless it does in your uh, economy, I don't know. You make the rules of your economy. Okay, so the integer is basically the amount of tokens slash your economy that it is going to give to the player that you've chosen in the first argument. So now if we just copy this, we actually need to add the dash one here. So it knows that we are talking about the player argument, which is the first argument and not the integer argument. Now let's just do a like a bit of messaging. So set your tokens to to tokens to and then tokens of play. And we don't really need this. Okay. Now let's copy this message, I guess, and let's put it here so that. It will be a little bit different for this one. Set arg, which is sorry arg dash one, which is again the player argument, and then tokens to, and then the tokens of the arg, with of arg one, which is again the player. So, but this actually doesn't do anything except for send a simple message. So what we need to do is to use the set argument command for script which basically works like this we do set tokens and then uid of player because this one is if it's not set two and then let's do arg dash two which is again the number now for the second one we want to do the exact same thing but use arg two here arg one here also in here if you really want to you can also change this to just be arg dash two I want to do it so that maybe if the script fails, then it actually sort of still won't. So let's just fix that. Now that we've saved this, let's just go back into Minecraft and then let's do the SK reload command. Let's reload tokens.sk and it has reloaded two commands. So let's do slash tokens. If you tell me that I have known tokens, I have zero tokens. And now let's do set tokens for myself, for colorized block, let's do 102 or something. So now I have 102 tokens, so let's check the tokens, and it says, you have 102 tokens. So great, that works now, right? Let's also test it with other players. Now, because I don't have another player, just test the tokens command with myself. And again, it writes me colored block has 102 tokens. So great, that works. But if you are just playing and you don't have op, then you are probably going to need a way to get all of these uh, tokens. So let's just go down here. And now let's do our trigger for getting tokens. So let's do on break off of let's do light blue concrete which will basically mean if you break a light blue concrete or the weight or this block then this event will trigger so let's do for this event we want to cancel the drops so okay so what we really want to do right now is to Put a cancel event here so that the player actually does not break the block okay so after we do that then that just makes it so that the block doesn't break right 
So let's also set event block, which is again the sign, the light blue concrete that block that the player breaks, to air. So now it's basically doesn't actually, the player actually doesn't break it, but it is still broken. And then let's use the add, the add to argument command from script uh, to add one to the tokens of the player. Okay, and that's really just it. Of course, this event can be a little bit complicated, more complicated than this. Like, maybe if you want to do that, you can also add on on a kill of mob. Like, if you kill a spider, then it will give you one token. You can do stuff like that. But for my system, it just uses a breaking of light blue concrete. Okay, so now let's just save this again and then reload it and let's break this. Now it doesn't actually do anything, but if you are to check tokens, I now have 105. I, last, last time I, ha I had checked tokens, as you can see here, I had 102. So let's also break a few more of these blocks and let's do tokens and now I have 114. So this is great. But this is still sort of a boring system and you can't really do anything with these tokens. So let's start making a simple shop. Okay, so we are really only going to touch a little bit on GUIs right now. So let's make a comment slash sh tokens shop. Okay, so let's make no permission for that and let's just add a trigger which will be to set underscore GUI which means that it's a private variable which practically just means that if we that this variable only exists for this command and after the command has stopped running then we don't need this variable anymore. So let's just set GUI to a free row wait to a chest gy of free rows named quote let's do and b tokens and tree shop and then let's open underscore gy to player okay let's uh, reload tokens and that didn't work. Okay, sorry, I did a little bit of a mistake. This needs to say to a new chest in chest inventory of free rows of n w w instead of off. This needs to be with name and also with free row and not rows. And now let's try this. And that worked. So let's do slash tokens shop. And now we have our very simple GUI here. We just open a chest inventory that if we actually close off, then we have just lost all of those items. They are not going to stay there. But that doesn't really matter right now because we can actually make this be set. Okay, so let's do set slot. And then I'm going to do something a little bit complicated which is using all integers between, let's do zero because that's actually the starter slot for GUIs, and eight. So basically the first row of the GUI, which just like all of this just means that uh, all of the slots from right here to right here, it will set with the thing that I want to. So let's slot. Uh, and then uh, let's add off underscore gy to light blue concrete. Okay, uh, instead of concrete, I meant glass pane. And then let's just copy all of this. And let's just add that back there. So now this will be all slots from 9 to 17. Uh, wait, is that right? Sorry, from 9 to 18. 
and now let's instead of using light blue let's use cyan here what is that yeah so let's use cyan here and then for the last ones let's do 19 to 26 which is the max slot for a 3 row GY which after we do all of that let's open token shop and that didn't work because this should actually say 17 and this should say 18 okay sorry let's reload this again and great now it works but we can just steal all of this stuff which is a little bit bad because if you can just steal this stuff then you just have free items so let's make that impossible let's just add a simple event so on inventory click which basically every time you click in an inventory like right here right here like that then we do if name of event dash inventory which again the in, is the, just the inventory that you're clicking on so is okay if name of event inventory is and then let's just copy all of this here then let's send let's just cancel event okay that should have worked let's try that not like this like reloading and great now i can't click anything i cannot steal all of this as you can hear my mouse is clicking but it can't do anything so and uh, that's just about that it for today thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial goodbye